She's been sleeping ever since we fetched her home from the hospital. You don't reckon she got the purple drowsies? <laughs> I won't know for sure until I examine her. Uh-oh. I'm putting her out of my all-purpose throat gargle, mouthwash, and germ killer. Well, I'll get you some more, Granny. Oh, uh, where are you hiding her still now? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's down in the bushes by the cement pond. I'll throw you off about four fingers. Now, let's see. Well, I got everything I need to give Miss Drysdale a complete and thorough scientific medical examination. Buzzard foot, needle finder, dried newt skin, acidity bag, left hind shoe of a spavin mule. I'm ready. Don't forget your mud dauber's nest. Yeah. I'll put that right next to my powdered bat wings and dried beetles. Gee, Granny, sure do make me want to be a doctor. Could happen, Jesse. But generally speaking, I don't hold to the idea of men being doctors. Clamp the house. Oh, it can't be. I went to the hospital to get away from them. Doctor. Nurse. Please come in, honey. Oh, no. Granny's here to doctor you. What am I doing here? How did I get out of the hospital? They throwed you out. What? Right out the window. Mattress and all. We found you laying in the bushes sound asleep. Oh. Uncle Jed and me hefted your mattress onto the truck and brought you home so Granny could take care of you. You didn't even wake up. Speaking of that mattress, Jester, I reckon we ought to take it back to the hospital. Granny's got it sunning in the yard. Yeah, I'll put it on the truck and wait for you out front. Here's your germ killer, Granny. How you feel, Miss Drysdale? I'm so confused. Please call my husband. I've been trying to do that, but he ain't at home and he ain't at the bank, uh, nor Miss Jane neither. Could he be at the hospital? Oh, I hope not. That's a terrible place. <laughs> They're awful unfriendly. Why, we had to climb up the fire escape to come and see you. Well, Jethro and me will have to get that mattress back in your room the same way. Well, take good care of her. We will, Paul. If only I weren't so groggy and sleepy. I bet you them hospital doctors give us something, like they's always doing on television. <laughs> Don't you worry, honey. We ain't gonna let them squirrely TV quacks get you again. A real doctor's gonna be treating you now. <laughs> Take this spavin mule shoe. <laughs> Poor woman thinks she's still back in that hospital. <laughs> As head of this hospital, I hold you responsible. Calm down, Mr. Drysdale. I assure you, we will solve the mystery of your wife's disappearance. How can a 132-pound woman suddenly disappear? You need a lost and found apartment. <laughs> What do you think you're doing? Making deductions, Chief. I'm uh, somewhat of an amateur detective. Ah, oh, baloney. If you want to do something, get my lawyer over right, here. Can we discuss this in my office? Now, we're launching a full-scale investigation. And I am launching a full-scale lawsuit. <laughs> Why do you doctors wear masks? <laughs> Seventy-five bucks a day for this room, and my wife isn't even in it. Now, I want my money back. Mr. Drysdale, your wife will be found and returned to you. I didn't ask for that. I asked for my money back. <laughs> Fine hospital you're running. Well, you didn't help matters any when you dismissed your wife's specialist and sent him back to New York. He was charging me 200 bucks a day and she wasn't even sick. Will you lower your voice? I'll do that when you guys lower your rates. <laughs> Mrs. Drysdale was under sedation and therefore could not walk to the window. Supposition. She must have been carried <laughs> on her mattress. Oh, howdy, Miss Jane. I'm Miss Jane. We figured the hospital would be looking for Miss Drysdale mattress. But, but, but how did you get it? Well, we found it down yonder in the bushes and her on it sound asleep. We figured the hospital folks throw her out the window. So we fetched her home and Granny put her to bed. She's at your house? Safe and sound. And getting treated a heap better than she did here. Every time we come to visit her here, they had this room dark and gloomy. 
Yeah, so the first thing we done was to open the window and move the bed up to it so she could see out when she woke up. Yeah, well, come on, boy. Granny needs us. Oh, uh, tell Mr. Drysdale not to worry about his wife. Hey, I never did find out what these here buttons were for. <laughs> well, like I said before, boy, leave him alone. Come on. Find us, Jane. Push the control buttons. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Naturally, I'm glad my wife is safe at the Clampets, but I'm not swallowing that cock and bull story about her being launched out the window by Jethro. <laughs> I'm suing this hospital for a bundle, and that's that. Help me move the bed to the window, and I'll demonstrate. And I'll demonstrate that you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Miss Hathaway, I've just located the nurse who was on duty at the time of Mrs. Drysdale's disappearance. So it raises the bed. So what? And I'm sure we can... Hey! Press the button to stop this thing! Is she dead, Jethro? No, what? He just chucked another one out the window? No. Yeah. Boy, these are mean bunch. In fact, they are. You couldn't get me in that hospital for no amount of money. <laughs> Chucking folks out the window right and left. What's going on? What's she doing out of bed? Oh, I want to go back to the hospital. The hospital! I don't think she knows what she's seeing, Granny. I reckon that fall out the window shook a few jars off the shelf. I just on my way up to give her some nerve quietener. Open wide, Miss Drysdale. Ah! <laughs> Fetch the poor thing back, kid. You better give her a double dose when I do. Her nerves is tighter than a high string on a two-dollar fiddle. <laughs> Look who was making a beeline for the back door. Be down, you Neanderthal! Want I should tote her upstairs and lock her in? No, hold her there. When she gets a spoonful of my nerve tonic, she'll be as quiet as a kitten. I refuse to swallow one drop of your witch's brew. You did. When she opens her mouth wide, spoon it in. I have no intention of opening my mouth. Ah! There you are. Put her down now, Jethro. Well, she'll run away. Of course she won't, Jethro. Granny's nerve tonic's got a mighty soothing effect. Okay. I'm going home and call the police and have you all put away. See? I told you. Don't worry, she won't run for her. Floating, Granny. Reckon this stuff's a mite strong for city folks? Here's so. I better call her in before she goes over the wall. <laughs> Come on back, Miss Drydale. Come in to Granny. <laughs> Hi, Granny. <laughs> I'm Doctor, it might be best if I went in alone to get Mrs. Drysdale. Oh, any particular reason? Several, none of which you would understand at this point. <laughs> Sorry, Bessie, but Granny says you can't be Miss Drysdale's nurse no more. You let her get away once. <laughs> oh, hi there, Miss Dray. Somebody's with you? Oh. Yes, but uh, I'm afraid this little nurse is one of the things he might not understand. Uh, where is Mrs. Drysdale? Upstairs in the room next to Granny. Where's Granny? Oh, out back. Want me to go and fetch her? Oh, no, 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 no. I'll talk to her later. <laughs> M. 
D. Oh, howdy. Are you a doctor? Yeah, that's right. No, that's what M.D. meant. Mr. Doctor. And the snakes on that there stick. I'm gonna be a brain surgeon. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Where are you studying medicine? Uh, in the kitchen, mostly. In the kitchen. Yeah, that's where Granny makes her medicine. She's the one I'm studying doctoring from. Oh, yes. Your, your grandmother is a doctor. Oh, greatest they is. You ought to see what she done for Mrs. Drysdale. Well, just what did she do for Mrs. Drysdale? Loosened to her nerves to where they was like a bunch of wet noodles. <laughs> hey, how would you like to meet Granny? I would like that very much. Well, she's out back. I'll go fetch her. Come on now. That's it. My name is Tinkerbell. I can fly. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Sanders is taking her back to the hospital. Well, well I'll just go fetch Granny. Granny! Granny! Oh, Miss Hathaway, the door. Oh. what is going... Doctor, give me a hand and let's get out of here. But I was about to meet a character named Granny here. That's why we have to get out of here. Hey, Granny! Yes? Granny, come quick! Granny! Granny! Hey, Granny! Granny! I'm dizzy. And hey, there's a doctor waiting out front to see you. And Miss Jane says another doctor's taking Miss Drysdale back to the hospital. We're overrun with the alarmings. Yes. Them hospital doctors has got Miss Drysdale again. That ain't all. They got Mrs. Drysdale, too. No. I just heard about it next door. We gotta get down there and save them. Follow me. Truck is up. Well, never mind. Come on, youngins. We'll pick her up on the fly. <laughs> for a doctor of my standing to have to climb through the window like a snake to you. Well, let's face it, Granny. This hospital is a mighty peculiar place. The quicker we get Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale out of it, the better. Well, where do you reckon they are? Well, come on, we'll find them. Bingo! Miss Drysdale's in this one. Well, likely Mr. Drysdale's in the next one. What are you doing here? We come to fetch Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale out of here. Oh, but you can't do that. They're under the care of Dr. Sanders. They're under the care of Dr. Granny. I'm in trouble if you're so much as seen on this floor. Miss Hathaway, oh. who are these people? What are they doing here? We use the clappers, ma'am. We come to fetch the laundry. Uh, the laundry here. I'll, I'll show them where it is. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, nurse. Right inside. <laughs> They're, uh, they're, they're charity cases. Dr. Sanders is trying to help them out. All right, all right. Oh, Miss Hathaway, I'm glad you're still here. That boss of yours is too much for me. He's leaving. You're releasing him? Releasing him? I'm throwing him out. <laughs> I know he's not afraid of that. Yeah, they fixed to throw poor Mr. Drosdale out. And his wife will be right behind him. We didn't get here a minute too soon. Well, we might trick you getting him down that fire escape. Well, you and Jethro can stand under the window, and Granny and me will drop him to you. <laughs> no more fire escape for me. I'm going out the front door like a brain surgeon had on it. Where did you get that? There's a whole shelf of them over yonder. Oh, I think you come up with a great idea. Well, thank you. What is it? Never mind. <laughs> Ms. Hathaway, come to the cashier's office with me. I want you to approve every item on that skin flint's bill. Oh, nurse, get that wheelchair ready for Mr. Drysdale. Come along, yes, Ms. Hathaway. Well, could, couldn't we go later? No, I... please. <laughs> you know, I'll bet he would go all the way to Africa just to get free treatment from Schweitzer. <laughs> No surgery. He said I could leave. Don't touch me! Quiet down, Mr. Drysdale. Yeah, it's us. We just come to get you out. Oh, you gave me a fright. Uh, Your nerves on edge, is he? Uh, I'll say they are. Open wide. <laughs> what was that? Nerve, quiet nerve. Get in the wheelchair, Jed. Ellie and me will fetch Miss Drysdale. Like as not, she needs a booster by now. <laughs> How 
I assure you, there is no cause for concern, Doctor. Two patients have been spirited out of my hospital. I call that cause for concern. We're not sure the Clampets did it, and besides, you were ready to release Mr. Drysdale. Well, yes, but not into the custody of a witch doctor. <laughs> now, there is some medical hanky-panky going on at the Clampets, and I intend to look into it. Nothing, you'll see. Oh, Bernie practices a little mountain medicine, you know, harmless home remedies. Well, if what she gave Mrs. Drysdale was a sample, she can be arrested as a pusher. <laughs> <laughs> Why, that stuff made our tranquilizers look like, uh, like pep pills. Sure, it was all perfectly legal and harmless. And besides, Granny can find her cures to her own family. Oh, she does. Take a look at that. <laughs> I, I, I wonder how that got there. Well, I suggest we drive in and find out. Yes, yeah. Ruth. Let's get these contraptions back to the hospital. And won't Granny need them for her hospital? They don't belong to us. Neither does that outfit you're wearing. Well, I like it. Makes me feel like a real doctor. Bring the truck around. We ain't keeping nothing that don't belong to us. <laughs> That sign out front must be a prank. <laughs> You'll see, they're just simple, fun-loving hillbilly folk. <laughs> oh, howdy, Miss Jane. Howdy, Doctor. <laughs> well, that simple, fun-loving kid is studying brain surgery in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, this here's Cousin Ellie. And this is Cousin Bessie. She used to be a nurse. <laughs> a nurse? Oh, oh. What ghastly experiments are they conducting in there? Get out of the way, Miss Jane. The dry jails is loose again. Come on, youngins, inside and help Granny and me catch them. Well, I just don't believe it. <laughs> gone way beyond my medical knowledge. I just hope the AMA can handle this. Never mind the net, Granny. The dry jazz is floating back. And I'm Peter Pan. could take a nasty fall. You saying I'm too old to climb a ladder? No, no. Too feeble and shaky to do a little housework? Not a bit. You saying I'm over the hill? Of course not. Heading for the bone yard? Never mind, Granny. Uh, forget it. I'm sorry I brought it up. What do you think I am? One of them senior citizens? <laughs> Sweet girl. Oh, she is, Uncle Jeff. She's a girl of a dream. My one and only lover 
Graham. Harris, I had to get the sand out. No. <laughs> Stop sweating me. I want a part where I can play a woman. A part that can make me a star. But Mr. Chapman thinks you're too young. Go over his head. Talk to that oil millionaire who owns the studio, Wob. Clap it? He doesn't have offices here. I don't know where to find him. You find him, Buster, or find yourself another actress. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Why'd you get a vicious dog? Protection. Oh, every time I drive through the gate, this this big goofy kid is waiting for me. <laughs> oh, have the guard chase him away. <laughs> he could break the garden too. This kid is King Kong in clothes. Probably just wants your autograph. You think so, huh? Get a load of this note he tossed in my car yesterday. Dear sweetie, let's get married. I have done graduate at sixth grade and am ready to be a brain surgeon. <laughs> If you marry me, I will operate on you free. <laughs> Love, Jethro Bodine. <laughs> Any comment? Yeah. I'd get two dogs. <laughs> Are you back again? When are you going to stop hanging around here? As soon as my sweetie marries me. <laughs> Look, kid, you want me to call the police? Well, shucks, no. I don't want to force her into it. <laughs> now, you better not stand over there and poke your hand in the car today. You'll draw back a stub. Well, what you mean? She's got a four-footed meat grinder riding shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yonder she comes. <laughs> hey, I'd even be closer to her over on this side. Howdy, darling. It's me, your sweetheart. Will you marry me? Get lost! <laughs> oh, boy, when she looks at me, I can feel it clean down in my toes. No wonder. She ran over your foot. <laughs> Hot dog! Don't ever shout at you again! <laughs> You don't want to get married? Thank you, Brutus. <laughs> Jethro, unlock this door. I want to talk to you. Come on now, stop acting foolish. Get your eyes out of him yet? Maybe we had ought to bust down the door. I got Ellie shinning up the tree beside his window. She'll climb through and... Kid. My last will and testament. <laughs> I'm killing myself. When? Right now. How are you doing it? I'm starving to death. Starving to death? Yes, ma'am. I ain't had no vittles all day. Another few minutes and I'll be dead. Yes, Ruth. Get up off there and stop talking foolish. No, thank you, Uncle Jed. I don't want to live without Kitty. Besides, I've done well my brain to science. <laughs> well, you might as well. You sure ain't using it. <laughs> Gee, where's Headfire? I asked her to marry me, and she turned me down and sicked her dog on me. What else is there to do except to kill myself? Well, if you really love the girl, you could try again. Sure, we'd help you. You will? Of course. I'll want you up below, charm. I'll give you some hints on courting. 
Even let you wear them a court and derby. <laughs> you hot dog! Is there anything I can do for you, Jethro? Uh, yeah, you can give me some hints on how to handle mean dogs. And the loan of a pair of pants. <laughs> Howdy. Oh, it's me. I come to court my sweetie and take her home to meet my family. Oh, you got to be kidding. No, sirree. This here's my Uncle Jed's court outfit. <laughs> Granny want me up a love charm. <laughs> that there Miss Kid Divine and me is as good as married right now. <laughs> Kitty, get back into your bathing suit and on that sound stage, quick. You don't listen good, Jerry. I told you to talk. Baby, to... you're through telling anybody anything. I got some bad news for you. What? You know that big goofy kid who's been waiting for you at the gate? Yeah. You ran over his foot, threw flowers in his face, sicked your dog on it. Yeah, yeah. What about his it? His uncle owns a studio. Clabbit? <laughs> now, I've managed to smooth things over with the director, but you've got just three minutes to hit that beach. Mr. Vine, Mr. Vine, Mr. Vine. She's in a big hurry, I Chet. just want to tell about that kid at the gate. I just heard about it. Do you want us to call the police and have him taken away? Taken away? You mean he's back? Yeah, in his Uncle Jed's court and clothes. He wants to take you home to meet his family. Yeah! Kitty? <laughs> Kitty! 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 Look. We don't want any trouble around here. Why don't you be a nice boy and go home? Oh, I will. Quick as my sweetie gets here, and she's coming with me. Kid, <laughs> face it. She can't stand the sight of you. Oh, that was before I had my love charm. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yonder she comes. I got to be ready. Howdy, sweetie. Hello, darling. Angel boy. I love you. I adore and worship you. <laughs> See what I mean? Oh, come on, sweetheart. Let's go home and meet your family. <laughs> hey, kid. How do I get one of those love charms? <laughs> well, darling, this is it. Hey, kid. Oh, I mean, sweetheart. <laughs> this is quite a place you've got here. Oh, oh, it ain't mine. It belongs to my Uncle Jed. Uh, is he the one who owns the studio? Well, yeah. But how did you know about that? Oh, just a wild guess, <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> well, and who might this young lady be? She's Miss Kitty Devine. The girl that called me a creep, run over my foot and sicked her dog on me. My sweetheart. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, howdy, ma'am. Hi. Oh, this here's my Uncle Jed. You are? Yes, ma'am. Jed Clampett. Oh! <laughs> well, uh, I'm mighty glad to see you and Jethro hit it off so fine. The boy is uh, surpassing fond of you, and uh, I know that you must uh, feel the same way about him. <laughs> Oh, Jethro, uh, I'm sorry you didn't tell me that Miss Devine worked in my studio. I might have brought you together a lot quicker. Well, I didn't want her to fall for me just because you owned the studio and had lots of money. Now, I know she loves me for myself. <laughs> Ain't that right, darling? <laughs> darling? Miss <laughs> Sugar. What? I was saying, you love me for myself. Ain't that right? Oh, sure, kid. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> well, this must be Jethro's intended. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, sweetie, this here's my granny and my cousin Ellie Mae. This here's Miss Kitty Devine. How's that? Howdy. Pleased to meet you. Same here. Are you and Jethro going to get married? Well, you betcha we are. So this is the girl you're aiming to tote over the door sill. Is that what you do when you get married? Yep. Yeah! <laughs> now he's married. <laughs> I reckon I hadn't better put off that long talk no longer. Now, wait a minute. You bit me when I got in. Now, at least, let me get out. 
<laughs> no, look, look, look. I'm, I'm just a skinny agent. Now, let me go, and when we get back to the studio, I'll get you a nice, fat producer. <laughs> Nice, 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 nice. I'll make you a deal. Let me out, and I'll put you in pictures. You could be very big. You got more teeth than Kirk Douglas. Is this your dog, mister? Look out, he's a man-eater. Well, I ain't no lion. Hey. You ain't a fed. Who are you? How do they clamp it? Clampett. Is J.D. Clampett by any chance? Well, he's my pal. Well, well, well. I'm sorry, Uncle Jim, but I am so doggone hungry, I wasn't hearing a word of your man-to-man -man talk. I kind of figured that. I am starving. It is the shank of the day, and I ain't even had breakfast yet. I understand. If I don't eat right now, I'm going to drop down dead right here on the floor. Now, calm down, boy. You can eat whilst I'm talking to you. Thank you. Uh, I reckon I'd best commence at the beginning again. Jethro? Love and marriage... <laughs> Love and marriage can be the most beautiful... <laughs> Jethro? Huh? Look at me, boy. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Love and marriage can be the most beautiful thing in this life. Especially... If it's true love with the right girl. Now, true love. <laughs> now, true love is more than just liking a pretty face. The girl has got to have beauty of soul, then. girl has got to have beauty of soul and spirit. And Jethro, could you stop chomping on them flakes for just a minute? Yes, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> so, you got to listen to your head as well as to your heart. <laughs> oh, your heart is probably singing sweet, tender love songs. <laughs> What a bite? Oh, thank you. I'll talk to you later. What'd you say? I say I'll well you done eating to do my talking. Oh, don't bother me. I noticed that. I'll wait for you outside. Oh, I'll be out as quick as I finish breakfast, lunch, and a snack. Now I'm gonna learn you a few things like how to sling chitlins and guess rope. I thought you was upstairs with your Uncle Jed. I was, Granny, but I got hungry. Uncle Jed's waiting outside. Hey, sit down, sweetie, and have some vittles. Oh, howdy, Miss Kitty. Uh, Jethro's right yonder in the kitchen there. Yes, I know. <laughs> but I'd like to join you. May I? Well, uh, you bet you can. Uh, 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 set right down here. <laughs> Fond of Whitman, are you? Well, what I'd like to do is talk. Well, talking and Whitman goes good together. <laughs> okay. You whittle, and I'll talk. <laughs> well, I think I'll fetch another knife. Oh, uh, the people at your studio don't seem to think I'm a woman. What dickens you say? Maybe I could convince you. Well, I believe you. <laughs> How about it, Ellie Mae? Would you like to be in movies? Well, I do like the notion of working with all them swimming critters. With what? Oh, them seals and porpoises and fish you was talking about. Oh, yeah, and the surfer pictures. And you'll also be working with Dash Rip Rock, Bolt Upright, and my new discovery. Crunch hardtack. What kind of critters is they? They's handsome movie actor critters. <laughs> Yonder comes my pa. I'll ask him, can I do it? Pa, can I be a movie 
Ellie's over to your studio. Sure, Ellie Mae. Well, well, Bay's in a hurry. Do I have to put on a dress? Oh, them Hollywood fellas don't know women when they see them, no how. <laughs> I done finished breakfast. Can I have lunch now? <laughs> Morning, Paul. Oh, can Elmer have some coffee? Hey, I thought you was getting ready to go to the movie studio. Oh, I'm ready. I just been feeding my critters. Well, you can't go looking like that. Now get fixed up and put on your prettiest dress. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, can I take Elmer to the studio? No, you can't. You're going to be a movie star. You're going to be making pictures with them handsome young actors like uh, Dash, Rip Rock, and Bolt Upright. <laughs> Sir? You're going to find out that fellas is a heap more fun than them critters. Well, they're going to have to go some to beat Elmer. <laughs> Give me that raccoon. Are you going upstairs and get yourself looking like a movie star? Yes, sir. Oh, Elmer don't like cream in his coffee. Now get out of here, Scoop. <laughs> Uncle Janet, as long as I'm going over to the studio, uh, can I produce Ellie's movie? We'll see. Go get your best clothes on. I still got my producer clothes. <laughs> All right, boy. Hot dog! Hey, Grim, I'm going to produce Ellie's movie. Well, get down here, big lumber. <laughs> Kid, you're not going to let them young'uns go to work at that sin-soaked movie studio. No, they're going to work at my movie studio. That's the one I'm talking about. Well, it ain't sin soaked. All right, Jed. Ellie is your daughter. And if you want her to become one of them Hollywood flibberty gibbets, go ahead. She ain't going to become one of them Hollywood flibberty gibbets. But it's about time she commenced having a little fun. Meeting some young fellas, getting asked out to dances and parties. Yeah, Hollywood parties. What's wrong with Hollywood parties? Oh, Jed, you poor, innocent country boy. <laughs> don't tell me you don't know about Hollywood parties. Well, I ain't never been to one. Oh, the stories I could tell you. <laughs> you been to a Hollywood party, Granny? I wouldn't be caught dead at one. <laughs> How come you know so much about them? I got it right from the horse's mouth. Elverna Bradshaw told me. Elverna Bradshaw ain't never been out of the hills. What does she know about Hollywood parties? Well, if you listen, I'll tell you. All right. Now, you remember Elverna's daughter who married Al Ledbetter, the undertaker over at Ripley? Yeah. Well, Al's sister was in a beauty contest, and the first prize was a trip to Eureka Springs. Yeah. Well, Al's sister didn't win. But the girl that did told about meeting a truck driver who picked up a hitchhiker who was a fry cook at Little Rock. Yeah? Well, they was a waitress who worked for the fry cook, and she had a niece. And that girl knew all about Hollywood parties because she'd been through the mill. I see. And the girls at the mill told her. <laughs> What mill is that? The flour mill in Springfield. <laughs> Man, how come the girls at the mill back in Springfield know so much about parties way out in Hollywood? I figured that was none of my business. <laughs> I'm not one to pass on gossip, you know. <laughs> but now that you're warned, I hope that you'll keep your daughter safe to home. With Ellie working in the movies, the Clavets aren't likely to go back to the hills. And with her beauty, she might become a big star. And if she becomes a big star, she'll make a lot of money. And if she makes a lot of money, she'll put it in my bank. Is <laughs> that all you're thinking of? No, of course not. I'm thinking of Ellie. Now, she might meet some young men, have dates, romance, get married. She might marry a big star. And if she does, he'll put his money in my bank. <laughs> if you're really thinking of Ellie, think again. Granted, she will meet young men, but what kind? Good-looking, successful young actors. That's what kind. Others like Rock Dip Dash and Hot Boat Ride. 
is dash, rip rock, and bolt upright. With the kind of money they're making, I don't care. They're called thing one and thing two. <laughs> Wolves, one and two would be more appropriate. Cads, both of them, libertines. Poor sweet innocent Ellie Mae is no match for their kind. Poor sweet innocent Ellie Mae can whip four of their kind with one hand tied behind them. <laughs> Meantime, she can have some fun, get invited to dances and parties. Yes. Hollywood parties. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? Oh, gee, how can you be so uninformed? <laughs> well, what do you know about Hollywood parties? Have you ever been to one? Certainly not. But I've heard about them from this girl who lives in my apartment building. Has she ever been to one? No, but she has this cousin who works at a flour mill in Springfield. <laughs> Ellie Mae, you is prettier than sun up on a frosty morning. You coming to the studio? No, I figure I won't write off, Ellie. Them young actor fellows will be wanting to get acquainted and won't help none to have your paw standing around. Well, Granny says I doesn't have nothing to do with them tricky Hollywood rascals. Ellie <laughs> Mae, your producer is ready. Let's get over to Hollywood and commence to Vine. Commence to what? Vine. That's what all the movie folks do. Go to Hollywood and Vine. <laughs> Don't you worry, J.D. I have got widescreen plans for this little property. Hello, little boy. Oh, she'll have to start out as what you call an extra. But I'm going to pan her close-ups, dolly her makeup, and budget her arcs till I have built her up to what you call a top box office has-been. I'm on the negative her foreign gross. I didn't even go to color. You're going to color right now, Jethro. Well, your eyes is red, your face is white, and your lips is blue. <laughs> Let's get some fresh air, boy. Yes, sir. Something is making me kind of dizzy. That's probably the dark glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll be all right in a minute. I packed your lunch to take to that sin so studio, Ellie. Thank you, Grin. <laughs> What's this for? Protection. <laughs> Yes, sir, Uncle Jed. But if it's all the same to you, I'd rather not produce Ellie's picture. Producing movies is too hard on a fella. <laughs> all right, boy. I'll do something easy, like write it or direct it. <laughs> Tell you what, Jethro, you just drive Ellie Mae over to the studio and then come right back home. She'll get acquainted with these young fellas a heap easier if her family ain't standing around. Let's go, Jethro. I got a report to the wardrobe department. Ellie, how come you're wearing Granny's hat? Well, she says it's for protection. Protection from what? Bella. <laughs> Need no hat pin. Big fire. All Ellie's got to do is tell them fellas her pa owns the studio. You don't have to do that neither. It's a whole heap about such things. Would you like to learn? Yes, sir. Well, this is lesson number one. Say, prune. Prune. Again. Again. Prune again. Prune again. Just say prune. Prune. That's it. Prune. I was right. You're more fun than Elmer. Can I speak to you for a minute? Is it important? Very. Orders from the front office. Excuse me, honey. Don't go away. Am I a star yet? <laughs> Not quite, sweetheart. You're on the right track. <laughs> what is it, Tom? They just cast the girl for your picture. Do me a favor, will you? Don't tell any of the extras. I'm uh, 
doing a little casting on my own. Shut up, boy. The girl they picked is the boss's daughter. Chapman? No, the big boss. J.D. Clampett. Well, what does she look like? Can she act? Who cares? Papa owns the studio. She's on her way over here now, so get rid of the chick. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Listen, sweetheart, we'll, uh, we'll continue your acting lesson later. Get dressed and wait for me at the gate. Yes, sir. Prove. Later, later. <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> Who is she? Never mind. I'm, I'm grooming her for stardom. Dolly <laughs> May. Oh, hi, Mr. Drysdale. Miss Jane. Get in. I'll take you to your dressing room. See you later, Chief. Right. As you can see by those clippings, I've got you pegged dead to rights. So there's no use trying to squirm out of it. Now, you try any of those shenanigans with Miss Clampett, and your next picture will be shot at the police station. Is that clear? I said, is that clear? <laughs> Riptide! <laughs> Give me those. Now, you go present yourself at Miss Clampett's dressing room. And you'll be charming, you'll be polite, and you'll behave. You understand? Yes, sir. Well, what are you waiting for? Could I finish reading those, sir? <laughs> Dash Riprock. May I come in? You may not. There you are. I'll come out. <laughs> are you a Dash Riprock? Yes, ma'am. Right. Let's get this straight here and now. I know your reputation. And there will be none of your romantic hijinks with Ellie Mae Clappett. You have my word of honor. <laughs> Just a minute. Bend your knee. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Bend your knee. There. Are you satisfied? Nope. Let me see your reticule. Take a good look, Mr. Pinkerton. Okay. I'll heft you on the truck, Granny. Well, you got her hefted. Uh, shake her down a little. Yes, sir. Ain't you got no respect for your poor old brittle bone, Granny? All right, set her down, Jethro. All right, let's have it. Have what? What you're hiding under your hat. That happens to be my head. <laughs> well, I'll be switched. I thought that was a heavy hairpin. All right, let's get it going. <laughs> Dash, you coward. I know you're hiding around here someplace. Now I'm going to give you until the count of three, and then your contract is going to be canceled. <laughs> One, two. Mr. Drysdale, have a heart. I, I can't make a picture with Mr. Clampett's daughter. Why not? Man, just her voice scares me. <laughs> that, well, we can just dub in another voice. What are we going to do about the rest of her? <laughs> are you kidding? Have you ever seen her in a bathing suit? No, I miss that. So her figure is one in a million. At least. Excuse me, gentlemen. Mr. Drysdale, I have been reading the script and I find it unacceptable. Well, what's the matter with it? For one thing, the love scenes with young Rip Rock here are positively indecent. I can't believe it. Well, she's right, absolutely right. I feel the same way. You? Yes, sir. When I first read that script, I said, why, these love scenes are positively indecent. Well, I, I'm glad to see you have some sense of propriety. Oh, I'm full of it. Baloney is what you're full of. <laughs> but we'll tone down the love scene. Now get back to the dressing room and get that beautiful clampet figure into a bathing suit. I refuse. Good girl. <laughs> I'm with her. Well, how, how refreshing to find that you are not totally devoid of moral fiber. Why, honey, I'm just solid moral fiber from head to toe. <laughs> Since we're not making that picture, may I see you to your car? You stay here, Dash Rock. I want to talk to you. Hello. <laughs> Sit down. Now, look. I don't care if you make the picture with Ellie Mae. That's not important. Well, thanks. The important thing is that she doesn't know any young men, never has any dates. I can believe it. But you're going to change all that. I am? How? 
Oh, no. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> Her father owns a studio. That means he owns you. Mr. Drysdale, please. I I've got the cutest little extra waiting for me out there at the front gate. Forget her. You're going to romance Ellie Mae Clavett. Mr. Drysdale, listen, you, you can't let a nice, decent girl like that go out with a cad like me. Why, she's liable to wind up at one of those Hollywood parties. You know about those parties, do you? Man, I could tell you stories would curl your hair. Really? Yeah. See, my aunt works in this flour mill in Springfield. <laughs> We come to see you, Ellie. Are you all right, honey? Sure am, Granny. You a star yet? Well, not yet, Paul. I'm still an extra. But Mr. Dash Riprock is learning me to be a star. Yeah, that's right friendly of him. Why, he's done learned me to say, prove. You've been saying that for years. Yeah, but it never was so much fun before. <laughs> you and Mr. Riprock have got real good acquainted, have you? Yes, sir, Paul. I like him. Well, then I reckon it wouldn't do no harm for the rest of us to meet him. Hop on. Well, you said to wait for him at the gate. But I reckon we can find him. Now, while you're charming Ellie Mae Clampett, I'll go talk to Chapman about your raise. If I pull this off, I deserve one. <laughs> Not to mention an Oscar. Just remember, her father has $40 million. Figures. What was that? Uh, nothing, sir. I'll, I'll make a pitch for Ellie, I promise. Yes, you do that, or you'll be making flour for your aunt. <laughs> yes, who is it? Dash Riprock. May I come in? Oh, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm quite alone here. Good. I want to see you alone. Sit here. Leave that door open. If, if, if you've come to talk to me about the script, I, I've had to make some changes. I, I, I didn't come to talk to you about the script. I came to talk about us. Uh, us? You and me. Oh, the, 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 us. Just can't you see? I've fallen for you. Me? <laughs> you, you, you have scores of girls. But not like you, believe me. Uh, I mean, you've got something I've always been looking for. Uh, intelligence. <laughs> I, 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 have, I, I find that very difficult to believe. I, I've been reading your clippings about all your amorous adventures. Every night a different glamour girl, a movie starlet or beauty queen. Yes. I've, I've hated every minute of it. <laughs> you poor boy. <laughs> Mr. Ripperett? Hey, Dash? Hey, where are you? I want you to meet my family. Yeah, we'd like to have you over for some videos. Mr. Clavett, what are you doing here? Well, we're looking for Mr. Riprock. Oh, good. He's a wonderful fellow. Crazy about Ellie Mae. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yes, he'll be taking her out on dates to parties, dances. Mad about her. Here you are, Chief. Hello, Mr. Clavett. Oh, howdy, Miss Jean. Uh, Chief, I wonder if I might have the rest of the day off. Dash wants to take me for a drive. Dash who? Riprock, he's mad about me. Must be some kind of a... Dash Riprock! Dry deal, I thought you told me he was mad about Ellie Mae. Yeah, but that's a different Riprock. The one who's mad about Miss Hathaway works in a flour mill. <laughs> Don't you fret, Ellie. You're better off out of there. Tell me, did that Dash Riprock invite you to one of them Hollywood parties? No, ma'am, Granny. Too bad. I was hoping your pa would learn for himself about how them movie folks carry on. Granny, once and for all, we're going to find out firsthand about them Hollywood parties. Right now? Right now. Hot dog! Where are you to, Uncle Jed? That flour mill in Springfield. <laughs> Here, Jed. I reckon you'll be wanting this. 
I don't feel like hunting this morning, Granny. I'm trying to whittle up an answer to Ellie's problems. That poor girl is lower than a hog's chin on market day. <laughs> That's what this is for. I want you to go over to that movie studio and find that movie actor that broke your daughter's heart and dust his city britches with a little country lead. <laughs> now, Granny, I don't like that dash rip rock fella no better than you. But stealing a kiss or two ain't exactly a shooting crime. I don't mean for you to drop him. Just wing him so he can't run. And then fetch him back here with a preacher. He wouldn't want him at gunpoint. Besides, he belongs to Miss Jane now. Yeah. That's what I can't figure out. How he could throw Ellie Mae over for Miss Jane. What's the matter with you, Ripcord? <laughs> Rip Rock. I told you to make a pitch for Ellie Mae Clappin. And instead of that, you went ape for my secretary. Are you some kind of a nut? It was a mistake, Mr. Drysdale. It was a catastrophe, Mr. Ripsnort. Rip Rock. <laughs> How could it happen? Well, I, I went to Miss Clampett's dressing room, like you said. I, I knocked on the door. Yes, who is it? Dash Riprock. May I come in? You may not. There you are. I'll come out. <laughs> and you thought she was Ellie Mae Clampett? Well, sure. You told me your father had $40 million. I figured she had to look like that. <laughs> I don't follow you. The rich ones are never pretty. <laughs> you are some kind of a nut. Now, you show me a girl with enough money, and I'll show you a raving beauty. I don't care what she looks like. <laughs> I'm back in the library, Chief. Sorry. Dash! <laughs> you a fetuous boy. Couldn't you wait until tonight to see me? Well, I... Oh, you won't be disappointed. I have two new volumes of poetry to read. Oh, boy. <laughs> But you shouldn't have come here, naughty boy. Deny yourself a little longer. It will be all the sweeter when we do meet him. <laughs> but Mr. Drysdale sent for me. Yes, I want to have a talk with him. Talk? Oh! <laughs> Chief, you, you have nothing to worry about in that score. What score? Dash behaving himself. See, Dash, Mr. Drysdale knows of your reputation as a playboy. <laughs> you won't believe this, Chief. We were alone together for three hours last evening, and... Not once did he make an improper advance to me, right, Dash? Right. <laughs> it is made of steel. <laughs> really? Even her critters is worried about her. and fetch the stick. Mine is crawling with him. Slytherin is the word. <laughs> Snakes in the grass. That's what them Hollywood actors is. We only met one. One's enough. Why, he struck like a serpent. Before poor, sweet, innocent Ellie Mae knowed what had happened, he 
Spider, Sparkter, Spooner, and Spender. We gotta take a chance, Granny. Them movie actors is uncommon good looking, and once you've tasted turkey, you ain't likely to settle for trite. <laughs> Hello? Uh, this is Jed Clampett. Uh, I'd like to speak to Mr. Chapman, please, ma'am. Oh, Ellie, honey. Uh, run up and put on your prettiest dress. A young man coming to call. Dash me, Brock! Uh, just a minute. Uh, once you see this rascal, you commence throwing rocks at old Dash. Who is he? Well, uh, he's a surprise. Now, you run, do like I tell you. Yes, sir. Mr. Chapman, I want you to send me over one of your finest looking turkeys. Uh, actors? <laughs> Trigger, what is it? Is it true that Dash Riprock is in Mr. Drysdale's office? It is. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, please, just let me take a peek at him. Oh, I'm ring-a-ding-ding over that man. <laughs> and that man is ring-a-ding-ding -ding over your... Who? <laughs> me. You? <laughs> me. Dash Riprock? <laughs> Dash Riprock? Oh, I, I can understand your momentary confusion. You're not aware of the new trend, are you? No, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> well, brace yourself, my dear. What you have is on the way out, and what I have is on the way in. <laughs> I still don't dig. It boils down to this pretty face and shapely figure are no longer the key to romance. Well, they must have changed the lock since last night. I don't see what's so complicated about it, Mr. Drysdale. I give your secretary the brush off and You then can it... hold it right there, Rip Rock. Rip Rock. You're going to let Miss Hathaway down very gently. How do I do that? I'll think of some way. Well, think of it before tonight. I can't take another three hours of poetry and carrot juice. Carrot juice? She brought along a gallon jug. I drank so much carrot juice, I could see in the dark. And when you're parked with her, who needs it? <laughs> Here's your new contract, Ripsaw. Mr. Drysdale, my name is Riprock. Dash, Riprock. According to this, your name is Homer Noodleman. <laughs> well, uh, th that was my name when I was pumping gas in Peoria. <laughs> well, you can be back pumping gas in Peoria tomorrow. You read me, Homer? Loud and clear. Yeah. Well, until you hear from me, you will continue to flip for Miss Hathaway. It is Keats, Shelley, Byron, and Browning. These and a jug of carrot juice will bring you an evening of ecstasy, sir. I'll see you later, Mr. Drysdale. Dash Redbrock! Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Until tonight, Dash, darling. Yes, until tonight. There'll be teats and carrot juice. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> away, away, for I will fly to thee. Not charioted by Bacchus and his pods, but on the viewless wings of poesy. <laughs> Eat your heart out. <laughs> Call me quick as Vittles is ready, Granny. I'm starving. All right, boys. What you got there, boy? Oh, this is a pinup picture Miss Jane gave me. She says she wants it back. Let me see there. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't figure what Miss Jane's got that Ellie May ain't got more of. <laughs> Ellie ain't got no beer rug like that. True. Oh, that must be Miss Jane. She says she's come by to get this and tell me something. Yes, bro, your riddles is ready. Well, uh, dog! Uh, you give her this for me, Uncle Jed. Well, now, hold on, boy. Miss Jane's coming to see you and tell you something. Oh, well, sure hope she makes it quick. I'm starving. <laughs> well, howdy, Miss Jane. Uh, here's your picture. Well, what do you got to tell me? Yes, bro. Get a grip on yourself. This will hurt, but I shall make it quick. And merciful. Good. <laughs> Look at me like that with those big, happy, trusting eyes. What I have to say is difficult enough. 
Well, what is it, Miss Jane? Jethro, you and I can be no more than friends. I belong to Dash Rip Rock. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Poor boy, he couldn't take it. I've shattered his dream. He's young, Miss Jane. He'll get over it. Do you think he'll eat his heart out? <laughs> well. Oh, hi there, Miss Jane. Hello, Ellie. Marna, how lovely you look. Why, thank you. You have so much. What a shame it's all going out of style. <laughs> I don't know what you mean, Miss Jane. Of course you don't, dear sweet child. But the new trend will not find you wanting. Fortunately, you have a well-stocked library. <laughs> yes, indeed. Come along. I'll help you select some volumes to read. <laughs> My dog is whatever Miss Jane's got. It's hid like a quail in a thicket. <laughs> Look, Biff, see you later. Hey, wait a minute. You're not going up and leave me stranded here. Those are my orders. Have a heart, Eppy. This girl has got to be a real beast. How do you figure? Well, look at this mansion. Her father's got $40 million and he's got a strong arm a date for her. That's probably why he bought this studio. He's got a whole stable of you good looking guys for his daughter. Yeah. Listen, take me back and bring over Tab Strong or Race Burley. Or <laughs> hold up right. Sorry, Biff. You're it. <laughs> oh, howdy there, young fella. Uh, how do you do? I'm Biff Steele, and I'm... Yeah, we've to... been looking for you. Come on in. Real pleased to meet you. I'm Jed Clampett. You're the Clampett who owns the studio? That's right. And it's your daughter that right I'm supposed again. to... Right again. I'll fetch her in so you can get acquainted. Swell. <laughs> oh, be a minute. Oh, man. <laughs> well, Miss Jane, uh, where about is Ellie? She's in the library, completely immersed in worthwhile literature. <laughs> Thank you. Just leaving. Have to get to town right away. Don't you have a car? Uh, no, but I'll run. Walk. Oh, the nonsense. I'm driving to the bank. Oh, Hop well, in. Thanks, but I, I just assume... Oh, aren't you Biff Steele from the studio? Yeah. Okay, let's oh. go. <laughs> Steele, Miss Harris. It's Steele? Where are you? Dog, if she didn't grab another one. Was that my fella, Paul? Afraid so. Well, gee whiz, what'll I do now? Well, you're gonna have to leave me alone for a spell, honey. I got some tall whittling to do. <laughs> reason why them Hollywood fellas keeps dropping Ellie and running off with Miss Jane. I'm listening. Well, the way I got it figured, them movie actors don't want nobody around them that is prettier than they are. Do you reckon they could be that stuck on their cells? I have heard that they is one or two could stroll down Lover's Lane alone. <laughs> Well, 
What can we do about it? Well, we just have to take Ellie Mae and homely her up. <laughs> it's the opening we've been looking for. Now, when Miss Hathaway walks in, you'll say, where have you been? And she'll say, I've been to see Jethro Bodine. And you'll say, Jethro Bodine, aha, another man. And then I stomp out in a jealous ring. Yes. And then you'll stomp right up to the Clampets and make a pitch for Ellie Mae. Now, have you got that straight? Right. I say, uh, Jethro Bodine, aha, another man. And then... Sorry, I was so long to... Dash! Where have you been? I've been with Biff Steele. Jethro Bodine. Aha! <laughs> Who? Biff Steele. Who is Biff Steele? Just another young man suffering from intellectual anemia. <laughs> starving for the... <laughs> cod liver oil of my companionship. Biff Steele? <laughs> jealous, Dash? You bet he's jealous. He's gonna stop right out of here. Aren't you, Dash? Yeah. Biff Steele, huh? Yes, Dash, and in all honesty, there is something I must tell you. I like him. I like him a lot, and he likes me. There, I've said it. <laughs> well, he's gone. Yes. That makes twice within the hour I have had to break a young man's heart. No, no. I rather like it. <laughs> Turn around, Ellie. What do you think, Granny? She looks plumb awful. Right, you've done a fine job. Do I have to wear this here thing? It's kind of hot and itchy. Take it off, Ellie. Whoop. Nice <laughs> try, Dale. Dash ought to be here any minute. You don't want to scare him away right off. If that don't scare him off, Nothing will. Run wonders for Miss Jane, that and some poetry. Oh, uh, you got some verses you know by heart? Yes, sir, Paul. Jethro learnt me three poems. This is a lot of darn nonsense. Well, we owe it to Ellie to give it a try. Hey, everybody, Dash Riprock's here. Come on in, Dash. Hello, everybody. Howdy. Howdy. Ellie May here? Oh, here I am, Dash. Ellie, you, you, you've changed. You look wonderful. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, hey, Dash, you heard any good poems lately? Well, no. I, uh... uh Ellie has. By the shores of Gitchy Gooey, by the shining bits, they water stems of wisdom of Nicomi. Very good, huh, Dash? Great. <laughs> she knows two more. Let them fly, Elle. Well, uh, maybe she'd like to save them till her and Dash is in the parlor. Well, come on, Dash. <laughs> Where are you going? Make sure she says them right. <laughs> you better not goof this time, Bip. Don't worry. Well, Granny, I don't like to say I told you so, but I reckon I was right about them Hollywood actors. It just don't make sense. I've been watching he and and she and for nigh on to 75 years. <laughs> Just go. Oh, howdy. Uh, Mr. Clampett, I'd like to apologize for leaving the way I did. Oh, that's all right. Uh, hell, he got over it. You know, I'm just dying to meet your daughter. Every actor in the studio wants to meet her. Here's the first carload. Come on in, fellas. <laughs> Tab Strong. Race burly, crunch hardtack, and bold upright. Yeah, hi, fella. How are you, sir? This here is Granny. Hello, oh, how are you? Nice to meet you. Ellie you got more company. There's another car load right behind us. Howdy, fellas. Hello there. Roses are red, balls are blue, sorghum sticking, so is glue. <laughs> There goes 75 years right down the drain. What exactly are we supposed to do, Miss Hathaway? Well, according to Mr. Clavett, we're to help Ellie May entertain a dozen handsome movie actors. Oh, crazy! <laughs> Oh, howdy, girls. 
Much obliged for hurrying right over. Miss Jean, thanks to you, Ellie Mae has got more young fellows than she can handle. We shall hurry to her rescue. Right in the parlor. And get ready to be mobbed. Larry Adam. Oh, uh, young lady. I wouldn't get my hopes up too high. From the looks of you, you ain't got much chance. <laughs> My pleasure, Ellie. You two spying on Ellie again? Not me. I'm spying on her fella. I'm spying on his car. Boy, I sure hope Ellie marries that rascal so I can drive it. <laughs> Come away from that window. Well, somebody ought to stay and watch. I don't trust that fella Dash Rip Rock. Why not? He's had Ellie May out two nights in a row till plumb past dark. And I'm driving today and still no ring on her finger. Give the boy a chance. A chance to what? <laughs> we ought to ask his intentions. I'll do it. Yes, Joe. You're coming with me. We got chores to do. I'll ask him. You stay in the house and leave them alone. You scare the boy away. All right, Jed. Whatever you say. Well, come on in, guys. Let's say goodbye out here. Goodbye? Well, ain't we going swimming this afternoon? Well, I, I gotta leave you for a while, Ellie. Instead of swimming here, why don't we go to the beach? Well, all right, guys. <laughs> Instead of picking you up out here in front, why don't you meet me out by the gate? Oh, fine and dandy. Uh, meet that outside the gate, uh, way out by the street. <laughs> Two o'clock, okay? Okay. Bye. Bye. My wife said I was to pay you for this. That's right, Daddy. Big Mama saw her down at the beach and flipped. She said you'd lay 50 skins on me. Skins? <laughs> I believe that means dollars, Chief. Fifty dollars for this piece of junk? <laughs> junk? Daddy, this is a Sheldon Epps original. You dig it, don't you, Chick? Well, the abstract art is not too dynamic, but <laughs> that's rather a striking likeness of a fish. <laughs> what do you mean, likeness? That is a fish. <laughs> Oh, uh, tell Mrs. D to hang it in the cool room. Get this thing out of here. I wouldn't give you 50 cents for it. You don't like this side? How about this side? <laughs> out, out. You're the money bunny, Clyde. You ain't gonna miss 50. Come on, start your own war on poverty. <laughs> Give me the security officer. Chief, if your wife agreed to buy the paint... If I... my wife wants that garbage can Rembrandt, she can pay for it out of her own bridge money. Now, get these monstrosities out of my sight. This is Drysdale's address. Perhaps if you drove up there... Hey, Chick, you want to buy this? No, thank you. How about a set of bongos? No, I... I'll make you deal with my threads. Oh, really? I... Sandals? Ouch. Wash your car? Ouch! <laughs> Come on, machine, you can do it. I'll give you a beat. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, wheels. Go, go, go. Oh, at the top of this hill is the pot of bread at the end of the rainbow. Oh, Shelly. Dig the drumsticks on that chick. She has misbuilt city. <laughs> Chick Chick! Mommy, I know Chicken. He's a doll! <laughs> hey, wait for me, baby. I'll be back with a pocket full of wampum. We'll make the scene. Scooby Doo, me and you. Look out, Jay! Right for me! <laughs> It happened in front of a doctor. 
Jewish house. <laughs> Reckon you can fix it, Jethro? I'll do my best, Uncle Jet. <laughs> you ain't fixing to give him a shot of straight corn squeezings, are you, Doc? Of course not. He's a city boy. Just sniffing the cork will bring him around. <laughs> I made it. I've gone to that big pad in the sky. <laughs> What's he talking about? I don't know. What happened, boy? How come you walked in that wall? Is that the scene? No wonder the lights went out. <laughs> and it may have seen the whole thing. That's right. Oh, yeah. Like it's coming back to me now. I, I, I was wheeling through Richville and... Up by your front gate, I saw this wild chick with the crazy drumsticks, and, uh, how? Well, I told you to keep them chickens pinned up, especially when they've been at your granny's mash. Well, it was little Arnie he seen. He just thought it was a chicken. He is a city boy, ain't he? How you feeling, young fella? Oh, I still read Tilt, Mama. How about another sniff of that airplane glue, huh? Jed. Whomping that wall has loosened the seeds in his gourd. All is ours, Granny. We gotta take care of him. Well, get him upstairs. I'll have him right as rain in no time. Come on, Jethro. Let's get him up to bed. You gonna put me in the sack? Oh, you ain't far enough going for that. <laughs> well, I'm real gone, Daddy. <laughs> you know something, Daddy? This is a real strong cat. <laughs> Ellie Mae, where are you? Howdy, Dash. Ellie, you, you said you were going to meet me out by the street. What happened? Well, this is what happened. Mr. Epps ran smack dab into the wall. <laughs> well, you shouldn't let him drive. <laughs> he ain't Mr. Epps. That's Skipper. <laughs> Mr. Epps got knocked wobbly, so Paul and Jethro's putting him to bed. All right, young fella, hop into bed. Oh, Daddy, you're kidding. Is this what you wear to Sacktown? <laughs> to where? Snoozeville. Oh, no. That ain't for traveling. That's for sleep. <laughs> oh, you two have got to be from outer space. You sure ain't Earthman. <laughs> Still talking out of his head. You'd best stay up here and keep an eye on him. Yes, sir. Hey, you reckon Granny can mend this? Probably. I'm going to have a rough time fixing these shoes. Ain't much left to work on. <laughs> hey, Daddy, where are you going with my threads and my skids? <laughs> Never mind, you rest easy. Granny's going to fetch you up some hot vittles. Crazy. Hot what? Vittles. You know, like grits, blossom belly. You're putting me on, Clyde. <laughs> My name is Jethro. Oh, come on, Clyde. Nobody's name is Jethro. <laughs> Mine is. There's lots of Jethros at home. Well, we's from back in the hills. Like I didn't figure you from Birdland. <laughs> hey, Clyde. Uh, Jethro. <laughs> Who's that big moose down there with the chick? <laughs> Who? Muscle boy. Mr. Biceps. Mighty Joe Young. <laughs> oh, that's Dash Riprock, the actor. Him and Ellie Mae's going swimming. Oh, no. Hey, chick, don't split the scene with that cube. I need you. You talking to me, Mr. Ed? Yeah, doll. I'm sinking fast. Come on up here and Florence Nightingale me. <laughs> you mean you're feeling poorly? Oh, baby, I'm like dying. You gotta save me. Come on up and lay the old Red Cross gig on me. <laughs> medic, medic. I'm sorry, Dash, but I reckon I got to stay and help care for Mr. Epps. Oh, wait a minute. I don't like the looks of that creep. Where's he from? Well, he says he lives at the beach. He's probably under a wet rock. <laughs> I'm staying. Ellie, I need... Well, Mr. Riprock, what are you doing? I'm leaving. <laughs> 
we're getting along, Granny. He's as catty wampus as ever, Jed. I fixed him a steaming hot bowl of owl soup. And you know what he said? No, what? He said, it's cool, Mama. Real cool. <laughs> well, you sure cleaned it up. That's another thing. All the time he was slurping it down, he kept saying, this is too much. Hey, look, man, I reckon the poor boy ain't used to eating. He told me he didn't have bread in his pocket for a week. He carries bread in his pocket. When a place again, he ain't got a home. No home? Where does he sleep? He said he had a little pad down to the beach. <laughs> he sleeps out in the open? Why, he freeze to death. Well, he's a pitiful case, all right, no doubt about that. Uncle Jed? I don't think Mr. Ebbs' tire is gonna hold a patch. Yeah. You're right. Did you stomp his front wheel back into shape? Yes, sir. That ought to make him happy. Funny thing, all he keeps asking about is his wheels. Don't care shucks about the rest of the car. <laughs> Your granny is eating table? What eating table? I was hoping you wouldn't see this, granny. But uh, appears like the boy has been taking his meals off the back of a four rent sign. No. Living in the open the way he does, I reckon that's the best he can do. Yeah. Least ways he's been eating. Yeah, but you ought to see what. Some <laughs> of the sorriest looking leftovers you ever did see? Land of course. <laughs> Ellie Mae Clement, you're supposed to be upstairs taking care of Mr. Epps. Well, that's what this is for, Granny. Remember how he thought Arnie was a chicken? Yes. Well, now he thinks I'm one. <laughs> that's the truth, Granny. He's been calling Ellie Mae a chick. <laughs> So I figured I'd show him what a real one looked like. Good idea, Ellie. We plumb gotta treat him pretty like he's a child. I know. Us doctors are used to seeing sad things. But the way that boy sits up there playing them little toy drums. <laughs> Would you tie a rope onto this and hang it from the elm tree? What for? For Mr. Epps. He says he wants to swing with me. <laughs> well, I sure wish he'd make up his mind. What he told me he wanted most in life was to have a ball. <laughs> so I took this away from old Duke for <laughs> Now, youngins, we gotta make allowances for Mr. Epps. He's had a hard life and a hard joke. And it's got his loft a little out of plumb. <laughs> Shelly, hey, listen, man, I won't be making the scene tonight. And no, no, I'm cool, but I creamed the machine. <laughs> now, now, don't pop your top, man. I am calling you from Fort Knox. <laughs> man, I'm not putting you on. Daddy Warbucks lives here. Old Goldfinger himself. <laughs> this cat has got 40 million gumballs. <laughs> and Wiggy, that's only the intro. Wait till you hear the chorus. He has got a daughter who is like the queen chick of the world. I tell you, the whole gig is right out of King Arthur. If this pad had a moat and a drawbridge, it'd be instant castle. <laughs> Wiggy, I'm gonna have to get off the horn now. Room service is knocking. Take it tomorrow. I'm gonna sack out here tonight. Like, uh, fall in. <laughs> How you feel, Mr. Epps? Crazy. Yeah, but you're going to get well. <laughs> I got a surprise for you. Open the lid. <laughs> Them is chicks. No, honey, that's some kind of bird. <laughs> Look what I got for you, Mr. Epps. A bouncy ball. <laughs> Well, who needs it? Give me my fridge, man. I'm gonna swing tonight. Hold on, boy. You better not swing in the dark. You'll have to bash into the tree. We'll put up your swing tomorrow. My time is for resting. If you want, we'll all stay here with you and play bouncy ball till you get sleepy. Yeah! yeah. That's what you do. Bouncy! Bouncy! bouncy. Don't I look like Bob? This whole thing is out of a book. 
And you are the Swiss family, Clyde. I know you and Luck has been strangers. But I tell you what, you behave yourself tonight, and tomorrow morning early, I'll go down to the bank and get you a big box of money so you can get a new car and never be out of bread. What do you say? Well, I say, don't just stand there. Let's play bouncy ball. <laughs> Jethro, I'll fetch a box of money. A box of money? You ain't gonna throw it out the window like you did at Christmas. <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Drysdale. I wouldn't want to see you get that upset again. <laughs> a small box this time, enough for a new car and some clothes. Oh, wonderful. That's great. I've been hoping you'd get yourself a new car and some tailor-made clothes. Oh, they ain't for me, Mr. Drysdale. The truck runs fine, and you can see I don't need no clothes. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, who's the money for? For this poor boy up to our house. Mr. Clampett, you've got to stop giving money away for no reason. Oh, but he needs it, Mr. Drysdale. He ain't got nothing to eat, no place to live. You call that a reason? It's not even deductible. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, Mr. Drysdale, but what's the good of having money if I can't give it away? <laughs> what do you do to my ulcer? All right, well, I feel what happened to this boy is our fault. What happened? Oh, the kind of Ellie Mayne or critter is he whomped his car into our wall. Uh-oh. I smell a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> and he ain't been right in the head ever since. He's faking, and I'll prove it. I'll be up there with doctors and lawyers and CPAs and witnesses. We won't get a dime. <laughs> Mr. Drydale, I done promised him the money. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, I bet that made him well in a hurry. I'm afraid not. When Granny and me went up to wake him this morning, he was just as cattywampus as ever. It appears like a good night's sleep didn't help much, Jed. Can't really tell yet, Granny. Mr. Epps? Mr. Epps? Hmm? Oh, huh? Rise and shine, boy, at six o'clock. Six of what? Six o'clock. On account of you feeling poorly, we let you sleep in. Boy, you sure did. Six o'clock, huh? Straight up. Oh, like wild. I slept all day. Oh, no, boy. It's six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> in the morning? That's right. Oh, Daddy, you mean it gets to be six o'clock twice? <laughs> Beautiful case. He still thinks I'm his pa and Granny's his ma. And you threw some fella named Clyde. Clyde? That's nothing. He thinks Ellie Mae's a chicken. <laughs> well, I want to get a look at this character before you make any settlement. Come on up. As soon as Miss Hathaway returns, we'll be up there. And uh, don't forget the box of money. Leave everything to me. See you directly. <laughs> How's Mr. Epps? Feeling better? I think so, Pop. He's playing pictures now. Well, that beats playing on them little toy drums. What kind of pictures? <laughs> well, he says he's painting one of Granny, but I ain't seen it. I think I'll go back to work on Mr. Epps' car. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Let's all go in and make a fuss over Mr. Epps' painting. That'll be good for him. Well, let's have a look. Oh, no, no, not yet, Daddy. I haven't quite finished the hands. They're rough to paint. <laughs> All right, cats. Here it is. My portrait of Granny. <laughs> Queen of the elderly chicks. Let me see. Well, uh, you sit back down, Granny. Uh, we want to see if it looks like you. <laughs> Looks like her. It does, don't it? Looks like something the cat drew. I want to see it. Well, uh, it ain't dry yet. Uh, get through a uh, quick, take it outside. Quicker it gets dry, quicker Granny can see it. <laughs> Easy, Clyde. That's a masterpiece. I'll be digging that a hundred years from now. Not where I'm going to bury it. <laughs> Holy man. You ain't really going to bury this. 
If Granny sees it, she'll bury you. Wait a minute here. Now, Mr. Epps. Oh, hold it. Oh, Clyde. <laughs> Your shirt! Oh, you have ruined it! Oh, no, I ain't. I can get this off the turpentine. <laughs> oh. You were right, Miss Hathaway. It's this no talent coffee house reject. Oh, don't wail at me, Daddy. Look at this! Ah. Hey, Chief! Oh, well, this is good! Good? Oh, look at this style, this sweep of movement, this blending of colors. The boy has found himself. You serious? Oh, this painting will bring $500 easily. So! Clyde, <laughs> wait! Don't clean that shirt! We're a team, man, like Toulouse and Lautrec! <laughs> Want me to wait out here, Uncle Jed? No, oh, come on up. Always seems a pleasure, Miss Jane, a heap to see you. Oh, good morning, Chief. Good morning, Miss Hathaway. Oh, I'm expecting Mr. Clampett for a very important meeting. Will Jethro be with him? Probably. Uh, come in and bring your book. I've decided to get rid of Kavanaugh. Give his seat on the board of directors to Jed Clampett. We'll buy him new clothes, a new car, he'll join the club. We'll meet and mingle with important people. The first thing you know, Mr. Clampett will be hooked on the good life and won't want to go back to those hills. Especially if he has to draw the money out of his own bank. Huh. Brilliant idea, right? <laughs> Miss Hathaway. When I say right, question mark, you're supposed to say right, exclamation point. <laughs> Miss Hathaway. Yes, Chief. <laughs> what is that? A wig. I got it for Jethro. Do you think you'll like it? Of course not. It doesn't even look good on you. <laughs> Chief, always a joke. <laughs> look, a bank is no place for frivolity. That's why I'm getting rid of Kavanaugh, our Playboy board member. So take that silly thing off before Mr. Clampett. How are you? Howdy, uh, howdy, ma'am. Howdy, ma'am. Hello there. Hey, why, well, it's Miss Jane. Well, I'll be doggone. What happened? Your hair's turned white. You been sick, Miss Jane? <laughs> Look, Mr. Clampett and I have business. Why don't you and Jethro wait in your office, blondie? <laughs> Oh, Jethro. Sit down, Miss Clampett. We'll, we'll figure out something. You will hear from me. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> really? And what did your mother say then? <laughs> Excuse me, Chief. Mr. Kavanaugh, see you. Clifton to you, my dear. May I have this dance? Oh. <laughs> all right, all right, break it up! This is a bank, not a nightclub. And you get back to your desk and take that mop off but, your but, head. But, but, Chief, I want to find out if it's true blondes have more fun. Ask one. <laughs> yeah, well, it's antics like this that have cost you... What do you think you're doing? Picking out a date for lunch. You want me to see if she's got a friend for you? Certainly not. <laughs> I'm a happily married man. Ah, uh, here she is. Where's the rest of the phone? <clears throat> <laughs> yes, dear, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say anything. Like you were thinking it. <laughs> now, that's the second seat you've lost this bank today. What are you talking about? You have also lost your seat on the board of directors. You're through. Why? Why? For conduct unbecoming an officer, that's why. They're calling you the playboy banker. The wolf of Wilshire Boulevard. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Stop grinning. Take stock of yourself, man. There you are, almost 65 years old. What kind of a life do you lead? Out with a different woman every night. Party, champagne, dancing till dawn. Aren't you ashamed? At 65? Are you kidding? <laughs> Instead of running around with all those young girls, why don't you find some woman close to your own age and settle down? Find real happiness and contentment as I have. <laughs> Yes, dear, I'm listening. <laughs> there are plenty of lonely... Granny. What? Listen, Clifton. What if I were to save your bank directorship for you? Well, that would make me very happy, no. but... All you have to do is to make a certain lady happy. She feels lonely and neglected. Now, she's not exactly young, and perhaps you wouldn't find her attractive. No. 
She's your wife. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of my wife. <laughs> Sit down. The woman I have in mind is J.D. Clampett's mother-in-law. I've never met her. Sweetest little woman in the world. Lovely, petite. Lots of fun. <laughs> Granny, there's a city fella coming to call on you. What's he selling? He ain't selling nothing. He just heard about you from Mr. Drydale, and he wanted to meet you. Now, you run on upstairs and get your... And come in. Uh, I'm Jed Clampett. So you're J.D. Clampett, eh? Yes, sir. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> It's a rare treat to shake hands with you like this. Oh? This is the way I've always done it. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, you're quite a famous man with all those millions in the bank. Close to 50 now, isn't it? Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Cavanaugh, I ain't never seen him to can. But I got a nephew, Jethro, and he's right good at ciphering. One of these days, I'm going to send him down to the bank, pile up all my money, and... <laughs> oh, I never forgot, you come to see Granny. No, no, I'm here to see your mother-in-law. Yeah, that's Granny. Granny? Get him a call here to see you. Another one? <laughs> <laughs> Granny, this here is Mr. Clifton Cavanaugh, and he has been wanting to meet you. Well, you ought to tell me he was coming. I'd have got fixed up a little. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, sorry about that. Uh, well, I'm going to leave you two alone. There's a nice warm fire in the parlor. So, uh, you've been wanting to meet me, have you? Yes. And now that I have. Au revoir. Hey, that's the wrong way. The parlor's in here. I dare not trust myself alone with you, you enticing creature. Going somewhere, Kavanaugh? Uh, yes, as a, as a matter of fact, I... Uh, he you... don't trust himself alone with me. Neither do I. That's why I'm here. There's a nice fire in the parlor, Mr. Cavanaugh. Clifton, to you, my dear. Well, that sounds perfectly wonderful, but it's, um, it's getting late, you see, and I have to dress for dinner. Where are you taking Granny for dinner? Granny? <laughs> Any place you say, Clifton. <laughs> There's nothing I'd enjoy more than taking you to dinner. However, unfortunately, I already have a dinner date with my aunt. Dear, sweet, old Aunt Phyllis, she's been looking forward to it for a long time. Then there's no problem. You can take along Mr. Clappett for your aunt. That'll be just dandy. A nice foursome. Yes, it would be. Uh, my car, though, only holds two people. Then take mine. <laughs> Very nice of you, Milburn, but I promised Aunt Phyllis a ride in an open car. The dear old girl loves to look at the stars and the bright lights. Then we can take ours. It's as open as they come. <laughs> well, then, it's all settled. I'll go speak to Mr. Clampett. Oh, wait. Mr. Clampett might not like Aunt Phyllis. I've seen some of these dear, sweet old aunts you take out for dinner. <laughs> Mr. Clampett will adore Aunt Phyllis. <laughs> How do we look, youngin'? <laughs> ah, dog! You two are sure gonna cut a deep breath tonight. Is he staying out real late? I don't hardly think so, Ellie. Judging from Mr. Cavanaugh, his aunt must be well along in years. As far as that's concerned, he looks like he's waded as deep as water, too. Oh, I don't know, Jed. He still might have a little snap left in his garters. Where are you going, Granny? I'm going to put a little vanilla extract behind my ears. If he still got it, I aim to get it. <laughs> well, Granny sure is happy, ain't you, Paul? For a fact, Ellie, ever since she met that fella, she's been grinning like a butcher's dog. <laughs> I bet you that's your date. Well, Jethro, you get Granny. Oh, howdy. Come in. Come in. Thank you. Aunt Phyllis, this is uh, J.D. Clampett. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. My dog, you are the youngest looking aunt I ever did see. Not as young as that granny. <laughs> oh, uh, this here is my daughter, Ellie Mae. Howdy. Howdy. Yonder's granny. Howdy, Cliffy. Are you ready to kick up your heels? You bet I am. Where's your aunt? Right here, uh, Aunt Phyllis. Uh, this here's granny. Your aunt? Right. You got a stitch, Cliffy? I'll be all right. <laughs> We go someplace and eat. All right, honey. Aunt Phyllis. Any preferences? 
How about a dark drive-in? <laughs> That's all right, as long as you got things in. Leave it to me. I know every spot in town. Well, get to one in a hurry. Some people like to be in bed by 8 o'clock. <laughs> Are you sure you want this table in the corner? Yes. Well, this early I can seat you next to the dance floor this if you prefer. This is the table we want. As you wish, madam. There ain't much business. Are you sure the food's good in here? <laughs> yes, madam, yes. I don't see no truck drivers. That's always a good sign when the truck drivers eat at a place. <laughs> really, I reckon it's a mite late for truck drivers to be eating. It's getting a bit late for me, too. Can we order, please? Cocktails before dinner? What do you say we have champagne? All right with me. I ain't choicey. <laughs> Phyllis? Anything. Fine with me. Reach your 59. Extra dry? I am. <laughs> Extra dry. Thank you, sir. There's a dance floor. What do you say we work up a little appetite before supper? Well, there's, uh, there's no music yet. Oh, that don't need to stop us. I brought along Jed's harmonica. Please. <laughs> Oh, you play the harmonica. <laughs> That's just dandy. You and Jed can take turns. And while you're dancing, I'll play the water glasses. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Well, I have a feeling that tonight, I'm going to do a lot of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know how to dance? Well, not the kind you're doing. I, I believe this is supposed to be a bossa nova. Oh, no. This is a Blue Ridge barn burner. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know it. Hey, Jim. Come on up here and show this city dude how to do the Blue Ridge barn burner. Just a minute, Granny. Feel like dancing yet? <laughs> and fellas don't feel like dancing yet. <laughs> I reckon she's had a mite too much to drink. <laughs> yeah, that's it, all right. <laughs> Anything I can do to help you, Aunt Phyllis? I don't suppose you carry a revolver. <laughs> you all right, Phyllis? I may never be all right again. It beats me how anybody can get juiced on that soda pop. Ain't got no wallop at all. I've tasted well water and had more. Hey, a little dancing might make you feel better, Aunt Phyllis. No, thank you. Anything you like? Yes. I'd like a few moments alone with my nephew. Well, come on, Granny. Let's show him how to do the Sibley side buster. Yeah! <laughs> Now, oh, Phyllis, I know what you're going to say, and you should be ashamed. For what? For using such language. I'm crazy about you. Crazy, period. How can that old goat be so important to your bank? Honey, that old goat has almost $50 million in our bank. He's our largest depositor. You see, they struck oil in his place back in those hills, and those millions just keep rolling. Oh, they someplace else by now. They was going to dance their way right down the Sunset Strip. Uh, could I have a cup of coffee? Sure, come on in. Maybe you'd rather have a glass of warm milk. Yeah, sounds great. Hardy Hooper. <laughs> Presentation.